So here we have a brand new MC4 cable. Uh, it's kind of an industry standard kind of a cable for solar panels nowadays. Uh, brand new, six feet long, and the first thing I'm gonna do is cut it in half. And you're thinking, oh dear God, you just got that. Why are you gonna ruin it by cutting it in half? Well, I don't really need one MC6 cable. What I really need is a, or MC6, what am I, MC4. I need, um, a male and female MC4 to bear wire. So what I'll do is I'll just chop this in half. And then that gives me two cables with bare wire on one end and my solar panel cables on the other so I can wire this cut end into a disconnect. So here I've got this little disconnect box and what's kind of neat about it is it's a uh, it's a box, so I can put all my wires together here. It has a fuse in here, and it has a big on-off switch on it to uh, connect and disconnect the power from the solar panels. So I can take my uh, two cut ends, run it up inside here, connect it to those terminals, and then uh, I'll have a disconnect before my solar charge controller. This is a Xantrax C40 solar charge controller, and I already pulled the screws out so I can take the cover off. And I'm gonna turn the uh, bulk charging down just a little bit because um, right now the city car is running on gel batteries and uh, they, uh, you don't wanna charge those uh, too high. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to wire in uh, this 50 amp uh, Anderson disconnect. Uh, and then that'll be a quick release between a cable uh, from the box to go to the car. Okay, the cover's back on the solar charge controller. Here's the quick connect for that cable. And then rigged up to the same terminals, I've got a uh, 100 volt DC voltmeter. So for my 48 volt system, that should read right up about in the middle. And I've got those uh, solar connectors uh, hooked up over here to our disconnect, so I should be ready to test it. Okay, I'm back behind the solar panel now, and here's the two ends from the solar panel. Keep in mind, if there's lights shining on there, um, they're doing something. So if I hook this up, uh, it's reading uh, 55 volts, and when I tested it for current, it was giving me about 2 amps, which is considerably less than this panel can produce, but on the other hand, it's, uh, it's really, really overcast right now. But still, that's... Uh, a uh, little over 100 watts on a on a very very cloudy day um, so now what I'll do is I will hook up those uh, those two plugs that go to the disconnect so now we should be able to measure voltage at the disconnect box so if I measure on the live side here I get 55 volts, and if I measure on the other side of that disconnect switch, I get nothing. And if I flip it up to on, and now measure on the live side, I get 55. So uh, we can see the disconnect and the fuse are both working properly. Here I've got a cord that I made up that uh, it's got that 50 amp Anderson connector on both ends. The one end I got plugged into the uh, solar charge controller. This is only about a 12 foot cable. It's nice and heavy duty. I originally made this for connecting uh, and charging my motorcycle from a UPS as part of my poor man smart grid. But now let's go over and plug this into the car. So here's my uh, collectible 1970s electric city car. It's real basic, it's basically a street legal golf cart, it's nothing that fancy, top speed's 38 miles an hour, which is fine, it's, uh, you know, it's all 25 in town, and uh, under this bench seat is where all the batteries are, so it's got a nice low center of gravity, uh, I've just got four 12 volt gel cells in there right now, because that's what I had kicking around, and I wired up a keyed pigtail to come out right here, so I'll just plug that in. We got that nice little quick disconnect and the other end goes to the solar charging area. 
So the city car is now plugged into the charge controller and also on that side of the circuit is the voltmeter. So we can see that we're, um, the battery pack is uh, about 49 volts. Um, that's indicating battery pack. Right now the solar panel is actually not even connected. It's in the off position, but let's flip it to on and watch the voltmeter as that happens. Can see the voltmeter went up just a little bit. It's uh, cloudy outside um, and we're not producing a, a lot of amps compared to the size of the battery, but it did go up just a little tiny bit. Also, if you look really close right here, it's kind of hard to see. It's a pretty dim light. Um, that just blinks green um, to indicate that uh, the battery is, the, the charge controller is in charge control mode and it's uh, working on charging those batteries. Now again, this is just uh, doing a little bit of testing. None of this equipment's designed to be outdoors or sitting down on the grass. Uh, this will all need to be permanently mounted in my garage out, out of the weather with a conduit covering up all those connections. Uh, and the other thing too is I'd like to add an ammeter because the voltmeter tells me you know, what, what that voltage is that it, it can be able to charge, but it doesn't tell me how fast it's charging. So uh, adding an ammeter, like a 0 to 10 amp ammeter, uh, would be really good for this setup too.